Hi, and welcome to this month's Thoughts on Leadership. This month, I want to dwell on the word trust. I find that I talk to leaders, I talk to people who work for leaders, I ask them what do they think is the most important characteristic of a leader, and generally somewhere in the conversation, the word trust comes up. So I thought I'd look into it a little bit more and try and understand what do we mean when we say the word trust. So of course, the first place to go is the dictionary. This is what the dictionary says. One, reliance on the integrity, strength, ability, surety, etc. of a person or thing. Confidence. Two, confident expectation of something. Hope. Three, a person on whom or a thing on which one relies. I have a problem with the word confidence and trust because it's always used as though it's in the positive. Okay? In other words, I have trust in you and so I can lend you money. Or I have confidence in you so I can rely on you to do something for me when I ask you. But there is the reverse to that. I can be confident that my next door neighbor is going to be late for dinner. Why? Because he's always late. So I trust he'll be late. And guess what? He is. A teacher can trust that Johnny's not going to do their homework today. Why? Because Johnny always forgets his homework on a Monday. Okay? So we can have confidence and we can trust in something. And it doesn't necessarily have to be in the positive. In fact, it doesn't have to necessarily align itself with our values at all. So when we use words like confidence and, and trust, the assumption that it's going to be in the positive is a little bit misleading if we're not careful in the way that we use it. I think what it's, it's interesting to look at what people's beliefs about trust are. You know, we can have somebody who very quickly, very easily gives away trust. They're very trusting for no particular reason they just start from a point of, of trust. At the other end of the spectrum we have people who are very careful about trust. In fact you go so far as saying they trust nobody at all. And I think in both of these ends of the spectrum it tells you more about the individual than it does anything else. So when we're looking at trust and we're looking at what people's belief about trust is, then we start to understand that there are different levels of trust and different types of trust, if you like. And what leaders do is recognize that there is this difference, and this is the key here, that they respect that there is different types and levels of trust, and they realize that they need to work at it with people on an individual level helping them uh, and work winning over that trust with those individuals. So if we understand that trust is something that is worked at, if we understand that trust is developed between individuals and that it is what ne works with some is not necessarily what would work with someone else, then we also realize that leaders have a healthy respect for people that give those both ends of that spectrum. In other words, for the person who's very quick to give away trust, leaders realize that they've gained that trust very easily, but there also means that they're very cautious about that individual, because if somebody gives away trust very easily like that, well then there's somebody who may be a bit fickle, maybe will react differently and, and and sway very quickly under given circumstances. Equally, at the other end of the spectrum, the person who is very not wanting to give trust away at all, they're very resistant to giving away trust. That's somebody who tells you more about that person. That's somebody that possibly, it's just nothing you're going to ever do is going to win that person's trust. So a leader is understanding those and has a healthy respect for the edges of, of both ends of the spectrum, if you like. 
So there comes a point when trust is just not worth working for. In other words, if you do have an individual who is somebody who, no matter what you're going to do about it, you're not going to win their trust, well, maybe then that person's just not worth working for at building that trust at that level, and you just need to get on and move on and work around that person or not work with that person if the situation allows for it. Leaders understand the critical mass of trust as well, the influence that that can have on a situation. Let me see if I can give you an example to explain what I mean. Let's say we've got a leader who has 10 people working for them. Okay, Now, you probably find that seven of those r give trust away relatively easy. They're on that end of the spectrum, if you like. And so building up trust with them has been relatively easy to do. Then there are two of them who are harder to give, build trust with, but also having built the trust, they're ones who always believe that, yep, there's this room here for something still to go wrong, but on the whole, this is worthwhile, and the more the time goes by, the stronger it gets. And then there's the one in the 10 who just doesn't trust. But they're not right on the edge of that, they're there in a position where, okay, so far things have been good, but I'm waiting for that moment of failure. Okay? Now, so you've got our 10 people. In comes a new member to the team. Now, this person is on the right-hand edge here. They're right far out. You know, don't trust anybody under any circumstances, no matter how much evidence points to this person being trustworthy. What the leader understands about critical mass is that when you work with somebody like this, there is no chance of being able to, to win them over. But they don't need to. The critical mass of the trust they have with the people they've got is going to deal with this individual. It's going to deal with this person where they're either going to not be happy here and get out, or this group are going to get them out, that person out, or this group are going to drag this person into line and demonstrate to this person that they're too far out to the right and that they need to work with it. it tends to create friction in a team, um, but that's the dynamics that tend to happen. And that's what we call a, a critical mass that's, that's in there that does the trust uh, for you to a large extent. So, I've got some questions for you this month. Um, these questions are very pointed because I want you to really consider this from the two different angles. The first is, what type of person are you? Where are you on that spectrum? Are you that person that gives away trust extremely easily? Probably too easily. Okay. Or are you that person who doesn't trust anybody? Or where are you on the line? Are you somebody that has a healthy lack of trust but is willing to be converted? Are you that person that will come from a position of trusting people until proved wrong? I'm not saying there's anything wrong in being in any particular position. I'm asking you to be aware of where you are because a good leader will know where they are in that particular spectrum. Secondly, how good then are you at working at building trust with people? This is a skill. This is something that leaders tend to do on a conscious basis. Something they actively work at with people. It doesn't just happen. So they are evaluating people. They are establishing what they need to do. They are understanding what the with this person is going to take longer to build that trust. With this person over here, it's not going to take as long. But this person is easily, equally going to be somebody who I could lose it with very quickly. This person over here, once I gained it, it'll be, you know, it'll be strong. So d do you actively work at this? Or do you tend to allow this to just happen and, uh, and hope for the best type situation? What I want you to do is learn how to tune, hone your ability to do this so that you can exercise your leadership in a more powerful way with individuals and become a better leader of people as a result. 
I hope that you found this interesting. I hope you found it uh, a little bit challenging as well. And I just want to say thank you to those of you who email me and send me your, your comments and thoughts, and, and particularly people who come up with suggestions about topics that I might wish to cover in the Thoughts on Leadership. Thank you. I hope you're having a great month. I hope that the problems in the world, you're keeping them in perspective and realizing this is your chance and your opportunity to show your leadership style. Have a great month. Thanks. Bye now.